Shalom. Here we are once again in the message from the wisdom of Torah. And this, is why, this week we are studying the portion of Pinchas, the story which appears in the book of Numbers, Bamidbar. We're talking about chapters 25 until 29. The story of Pinchas begins with a very sad story when the people of Israel are after they received the blessings from Bil'am, as we mentioned in last week's portion, they start sinning with the daughters of Midian, the Midianite daughters. And God calls upon Moses and tells him, we can't continue this way, and Moses commands to punish those who sinned, and then Pinchas raises up, and he takes his own initiative, and he actually stops the plague that was happening upon the people, that God brought upon the people uh, by doing a very, very, I would say, extreme act. He kills the sinner, Cosby, and Zimri, and the lady, Cosby. And then God says to Moses, I'm talking about chapter 25, verse 16, 17. And God speaks to Moses, V'yidaber Adonai Moshe le'mor, Tzaror et ha-Midianim v'yikitem otam. God commands Moses to oppress the Midianites, to attack the Midianites, because they are Tzoririm hem lachem, because they oppress you. Immediately after that, we would expect the Torah to tell us the story of attacking the Midianites as God commanded Moses. But then suddenly the Torah stops and deals with six different other topics until finally in chapter 31 do they return to the command of God and God tells Moses to avenge the sins of the Midianites towards the Jewish people. What are these six topics that the Torah decides to deal with between the command of Tzaror at the Midianim, oppress the Midianites, which appears in chapter 25, verse 16, 17, Tedzayin, Yudzayin? What happens from there where the Torah suddenly stops and deals with the six different topics? Well, we should try to look at what the six topics are and try to understand and maybe we will get a new understanding in the life of a religious person. The six topics are, the first topic is the chapter 26, Perak Kafvav, which is quite a long chapter, which deals with the counting of the people of Israel. We know that this book is called Numbers, Bamidbar in Hebrew is in the desert, but the, the English name is Numbers, and that because the, to the, in the book of Numbers, uh, the people of Israel are counted twice, once in the beginning and once here in chapter 25. So here this chapter, which is like 65 verses, speaks about the counting of each and every one of the families of Israel. Which is actually a process or a pre preparation for entering the land of Israel. Then chapter 27 begins, Kaf Zayin begins with the story of the daughters of Tzlafchad, whose father had passed away, and they request from Moses, from Moshe, to transfer his inheritance to them because there are no males in the family. The third topic is also a totally different topic, and that's where God tells Moses, tells Moshe in chapter 26, verse 12, Yomer Adonai el Moshe ale el hara avarim, and God notifies Moses that his end is very close, and therefore he has to go up to the Mount of Avarim, and from there he will be able to see the land which he will not be able to go to. Next comes the story of appointing Moses' procedure, Joshua. Moses says to God, please choose somebody who will go into my shoes and will lead the people of Israel as they enter the land of Israel. And that is chapter 26, verses 15 till 23, Perak of Zayin, Psukim, 
Tetvav until Kaf Gimel. Later on, we, we reach chapter 28, which is also a very long chapter, chapter which also not, not only 28, it's 28 and 29, Perak Kaf Chet and Perak Kaf Tet, which deals with all the offerings, or mainly the public offerings, brought to the temple in Jerusalem. We have the daily offerings, we have the specific offerings for each and every one of the holidays, whether it's New Moon, whether it's Passover, the Pente- Pentecost, and all the other holidays of Sukkot, etc., etc. Finally, the sixth topic, which begins next week's portion, is Matot, which talks about the vows and oaths, uh, that, 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 and how to cancel mainly vows and oaths of women. These are the six topics. I'll repeat them again. The counting, the family of, uh, uh, the, the request of the daughters of Tzlofchad, the command to, God, to Moses to go up to the mountain of Avarim, the appointing of Joshua, the offerings which Moses, or which the people have to bring in the Holy Temple, and the story of the vows and the oaths. Actually, these are six topics, but they can actually be divided also into, two, into three pairs of two. We have the counting, and after the counting we have the daughters of Tzlafchad. What does that mean? God tells, gives a command. Count the people. The people are to be counted. Why? Because they're going to divide the land. Each tribe is going to be receiving their portion in the land. From that story, we have a something which is not of the regular process, but we have a family. We're talking about the Tzlafchad daughters that say, we want, we have a special case. We want to receive a part of the land. What do we see here? We see we have a command a religious command, count the people, give out the land, and then we have a human initiative, the daughters of Tzlafchad. They're not going to just take the word of God and leave it. They want to request from God something they deserve. We have something in the religious life, not only receiving the word of God, but there's a place for personal initiative, for personal, voluntarily, Request of something that you deserve, something that, that you feel is right, even in, 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 the, in the eyes of God. The second pair we, we have is the pair of God telling Moses in chapter 27, verse 12, go up to the Mount of Avarim. In this chapter, God tells Moses, your time is, come, is coming to an end, go up to the mountain of Avarim and take a look at the land. Moses remembers something, because God reminds him this. God says to Moses, in verse 13, Pasuk Yud Gimel, Veraita look at the land, Veneesafta elamecha, you should be gathered to, your, to, your, to the people, I mean, which means you're coming, your life is coming to an end, as was gathered Aaron Akasher Neesaf Aaron Achicha. Moses remembers that when he got the, the, the command, to take Aaron up to the mountain, to the mountain of Hor Har, and where Aaron's life comes to an end, God specifically tells him, appoint Elazar, his son, to take over. And here, it's missing. God just tells him, listen, go up to the mountain and take a look at the land. And Moses, from himself, and here we have a very unique pasuk, the only time in the whole Torah. We were, we're used to the pasuk, to the verse, Vayidaber Adonai el Moshe Leimor, God speaks to Moses. Here we have one time in the whole Torah. Vayedaber Moshe el Adonai Lemor. No other place in the Torah that we have this pasuk where Moshe, he takes the initiative. It's like he's commanding God. And that's what he says. He says, God, appoint somebody. And here we see where Moses himself teaches us. It's not, a religious person is not one who just takes the word of God and takes it as it is. But if he understands there's something for God's sake, that needs to be done, he will make the extra step, the extra initiative. Finally, we come to the last pair. God commands the people about the offerings. The offerings which are to, brought, to be brought by the public to the temple. And the final verse of this story appears in chapter 29, Perak Kaftet, verse 39, Pasuk Lametet. These are the, land, the offerings. 
לבד מנדריכם ונדבותיכם. Besides your oaths and vows that you to bring, which means even in the worshiping of the temple, we have a place for personal initiative. And immediately, when Moses tells the, the, the story or the command about personal offerings, he does not talk to the people directly, he already talks even to the, to the local leaders. Vayidaber Moshe el Rashei Hamatot. He speaks to the tribal heads. He's not here like giving a command, but he's talking about something which is very, very personal, very, very personal, voluntarily initiative. So the worshiping of God is not only by taking the word and, or, and, and doing it on your own, and take it or leave it, or take it, but also personal initiative. And now we get back to the story of Pinchas, where he himself took the initiative. He does something he learned from his teacher, from Moses. Because what Pinchas does here is exactly what Moses did after the sin of the gold calf. And once again, at the end of the story of the, of, the, of the battle with the Midianites, we have two stories of donating what they captured in the b- battlefield. One was a command by Moses tells, tells them they have to give a certain percentage to God. They give it to the Levites. But then the leaders of the battle, on their own, their own initiative, they volunteer and give. And what they give is not only goes to the Levites, but it goes to the temple itself. What we see here is a very interesting story. We have a story of Pinchas who teaches us, especially towards the end of, of Moses' life, where Moses is leaving, that a person does not only have to take the word dogmatically and do it what it says, but he has to be open to personal initiative. One more point we see over here is that the story of Pinchas was when the people of, the, of, of Israel were referring to the daughters of of the Midianites, as, I would say, objects of temptation, of lust. The Midianite daughters had no name, Benot Moav, and suddenly we see here a totally different re- uh, reference to the women. We have the daughters of Tzlafchar, each one of them is their na- mentioned by their name, Chogla, Noah, Tirza, each one of them has a name, and they have what to say. And once again, also, when the vows and the oaths, the re- reference is to the women as personalities ha- and have their own initiative of doing things. The Torah, just by dividing the story of the event in the Midianites, teaches us a very basic, basic religious principle. Worshipping of God is not only taking the Word of God and doing as it says, but you should be open to understand reality and to initiate voluntary worship of God in the framework of the Torah. Shabbat Shalom.